Hey everybody, it's Bander Tyrell, and I'm back again to do another video for you guys. This time I'm going to be focusing on the PBR material changer that I put out recently. I've made a couple updates to it, made it a little easier to use, and gave it some more functionality. Um, it's still it's still pretty basic, but it will be getting you know more advanced as we go. But it does the job now, which is the important thing. Plus, I, I also got it working so that I can do it with uh, both PBR materials and non-PBR materials using another texture changer. So I'm not going to implement the non-PBR stuff in this. Um, I figure it's legacy at this point, and we'll just go with what we've got. So I use the black tulip texture changer for my non-PBR materials. And so <clears throat> I have this set up so that we can do it with uh, both the black tulip changer for non PBR stuff. And you can use this one mine if you want for PBR materials. So what we've got right now is I've got a setup. Let me, uh, I just built a new, new bed here. This is the bed that I've, I'm working on. Um, it's pretty, pretty basic. And we're going to do some texturing on this in Substance Painter. And then I'll use the Texture Changer to save it. And I'm going to do both PBR and non-PBR and show you kind of how to do that as well. So let's go ahead and pull up the uh, the model in Substance Painter, which is here. So that's Substance Painter. That's the bed in Substance Painter. That's what it looks like. And it's going to look pretty much like this when we're done with it in Second Life too. I'm not showing the floor shadow here. I do have a floor shadow. Um, so the first step I wanted to do was to export that floor shadow and uh, put it onto the to the bed so you can see it. So I figured, why don't I go ahead and show you how to do that too. I, I have a video that shows how to do it. <clears throat> so an interesting aside, I figured there has to be a way in Substance Painter to generate this floor shadow. And there is, and I found out how to do it and I got it to work, but the problem was it doesn't work well. <laughs> it doesn't do what I want. Um, so you end up getting the shadow and the, the ambient occlusion on a transparent background instead of white. But Substance Painter doesn't realize that we want it to end before it gets to the edge. So it does kind of this grayscale shading effect all the way out to the edge. And then when you use that image in Second Life, uh, you can see a very pronounced sharp edge all the way around here. And I'm sure there's a way to limit that using levels or something, because um, that's what you do in Photoshop is you, is you use levels in a, against a white background and you get rid of that. So there's probably a way to do that, but it was already a time-consuming and multi-step task to do that uh, in Substance Painter. So it's faster and easier just to do it in Photoshop. So I'm going to do the, the floor shadow in Photoshop, and I'll show you how to do that. I'll do everything else in Substance Painter <clears throat> and uh, Second Life using the, uh, the scripts that I've created. So uh, let's show you how to do this. So the first thing you want to do is you want to export your textures. And we're not going to export PBR for this. We're just going to export um, the AO. So I want to select the shadow here. And I've shown this in videos before. I have a thing set up for Second Life to export uh, an export template, output template. Um, so you'll see here it's going to export the diffuse, the norm, the spec. Well, I don't need those. The only thing I really need is the AO. So go ahead and <coughs> excuse me, export that. And then we'll go over to Photoshop. And we'll load that. This is the output image. We'll load that into um, into Photoshop. I've already got it loaded. And then you want to have three layers underneath the image. So this is the image that came out of Substance Painter. Then I have a, a layer filled with white, a layer filled with black, and a transparent layer. And you have to unlock these, and you have to rasterize this, which I think I already did. Yep. So this is ready to go. Um, then you're going to use Levels, Control-L, and we're going to pull this down. This is what 
this is the part that's missing in Substance Painter that I couldn't figure out how to do. So you pull that down until you get, you don't have gray all the way out to the edge, you have white, uh, clear white around it. You can go as far down as you want to. If I do it right there, I can see it ends about right here, all the way around. So you just want to make sure that you have white out to the edge. That way you don't get a distinct line at the edge of your um, the, the mesh floor shadow. It doesn't have a line. Uh, otherwise, there would be a line. All right, so that's where I want it. So I want it here. Uh, now we're going to go to Channels. We're going to hit Select that. Then you're going to go up to Select, and you're going to invert your selection. Then you go back to layers. We're going to add a new layer on top of this, and we're going to do edit, and we're going to fill with black. Okay, and then that's done. So just to test it, that's what it's going to look like against a white background. This is what it'll look like against a black background. So you can you don't see anything, which is good. Um, there's other ways of producing this shadow and sometimes when you do this if you place the the furniture against a dark background the shadow looks white or gray that's because it wasn't done correctly so doing it this way you don't have that problem so a shadow on black will be black a shadow on white will look like a shadow and then lastly we have a shadow against transparent and that's what we're going to we're going to keep so i'm going to export that and we'll just drop it out into my export folder and we'll call it a uh... okay so it's out there now i'm done in photoshop okay so let's go ahead to second life and i'll apply that so i'm going to upload that image that we just did which was in the export folder and it's called ao and there it is upload it mm -hmm. and then i'm going to drop it on my floor shadow and so now i have a floor shadow also i have uh I'm using the Firestorm Alpha, and I have photo tools set up with uh, a lot of darkness. So if you get an Alt-P, you can see what my photo tool settings are. Under Light, I have these set up, and it really gives me... Um, it looks really good, and it's great for photography, but um, it's kind of annoying because it doesn't always look that great, and, it, and you get a lot of darkness. So you'll see there's there's a lot of darkness around here. Um, looks almost like artifacting, right? That should get rid of it. Hey, it's gone. But I also got rid of completely got rid of ambient occlusion. So turn it back on. Just in case you wanted to know why it looks the way it looks. Okay, so I have my floor shadow. It's ready to go. All right, let's go back to Substance Painter now. And we're going to export the uh, textures for this. So I'm as I said, I'm going to do both. PBR and non-PBR materials for this. So let's do the non-PBR materials first. So since I already had that loaded, so we'll go to the export textures. I'll use my Second Life export. In case you want to know what that is, it's basically, I have a diffuse, a normal, and a specular, and an AO setup. The diffuse is an RGB, and it comes from the 2D view. That's what you want to use. You want to get the 2D view. And then I have my normal. It's using RGB, and it's using the normal OpenGL output. These are all my converted maps that come out when you do a bake mesh maps. And then the specular is, is a grayscale and it's using specular. And so I set that up. So then when you go into Substance Painter and you bake your mesh maps here, it'll generate those for you. And then you just export to that. So um, let's see, where am I? Okay, I've already textured this. It's, I mean, it's not the it's not the prettiest looking um, fabric. I just wanted to see if stripes would work on my model, and they do. <laughs> I've had a lot of problems with UV maps, and I, I finally got this UV maps so that I like them, so that um, lines are correct all the way around. So uh, I'm really pleased with the way that turned out. Anyway, so this is 
th this is what we're going to export. Um, so I have export set up with that. So just make sure we set up the output template for Second Life. We're going to turn everything on. We don't need the shadow anymore, so we can turn the shadow off. And I have a bunch of parts in here. These are the materials that I used. So I have one for the box springs, one for the comforter, one for the footboard. The headboard's in two pieces. There's a bottom and a top. I could have joined them together, but I decided to do them separately. <clears throat> and the bottom of the headboard and the footboard, it's exactly the same model. Uh, just put a different material name on there. So sometimes if you use the same material on two parts that are on different parts of your model, I've noticed that the shit, the lighting sometimes doesn't look right. So... I, I did them separately. And then uh, the mattress, pillow one, pillow two. And this is how my texture changer is gonna work. So when I do set up the texture changer, either the black tulip one or my own, the parts will be, <clears throat> these are the parts that I'm gonna be putting materials on it. And that's the names that I'll use in them to describe them in the descriptions. So I'll, I'll have the box springs, comforter, footboard, headboard, head top, sorry, footboard, head bottom, head top, mattress, pillow one, pillow two, and side rails and I don't need to do shadow and then I don't need I'm going to turn AO off on these because I don't really need it um, you can generate you can generate it if you want a copy of the AO and then you can bring it into Second Life and maybe you can set if you're if you're doing a prefab and you want to put the AO on your model so that it looks like it has ambient occlusion on it then you can use those um, the AO output as a diffuse to, to do that. Otherwise, you just use those in Photoshop with a multiply layer mask to generate textures with AO. But, <clears throat> but we're not going to be doing that today because we're going to be doing everything in Substance Painter. So I don't really need them. So I'm going to save myself some uh, files constantly being downloaded and generated by turning off AO. So just go one by one and turn AO off. I missed one. The little asterisk here indicates that I've changed this, so I know that I actually did it. And then just hit export. Oh, before I do that, let me clean out my export folder. It gets really full of stuff. Uh, I'll even get rid of that. I don't need it anymore. Okay, it's everything's gone. And export now it's going to generate the diff the norm and the spec for all those different parts and then we can go to second life and we'll upload them build upload bulk export and it's everything here so we'll just go ahead and grab it all and then we wait and while it's doing that i'm going to go ahead and set up a folder for it i'm not i don't want to keep it in the the base so uh, inventory in the new firestorm alpha when you open your inventory it takes about five seconds to show up and that's frustrating so as these are loading i can't really move around and do much so i'm just gonna have to wait so i'll wait with you guys i'm not gonna pause the video we'll just get through this it doesn't take that long um so yeah about my texture changer so there wasn't one on the market, so I decided to put one out there. It's uh, it's pretty basic, and it's it's really for builders who kind of have an idea of what you're doing. So it's not necessarily easy for a, a beginner to, to. It's not hard, but it's not necessarily easy for a beginner to to use it. Um, I'll probably make it a little more powerful and capable. As time goes by, as I start needing features, I'll turn them on. That's what I'm doing. So I have the first one I put out, it didn't handle a single object with multiple faces. Uh, version 1.02 does. So I had, a, I had a model that I made and I was using two different faces with two different textures, two different materials. And it, it, it would only change one of them. And it well, actually would change both of them to the same thing, which didn't work, right? So then I realized, oh, yeah. There's a mistake in the in the scripts, uh, both the dump script and the uh, the runtime script both had a we're doing the same mistake, so I fixed that and so it actually works for all the faces now. So you can use 
a single object with multiple faces and you can do texture changer um, to, to change all of those as well in this version okay this is finished so i'm going to go ahead and do what i was doing so um everything comes into textures but i don't want it there so i've got a, a place i created called my pbr materials i'm going to add a new folder in here for this bed and this bed is going to be called the country bed and then in country bed i'm going to have two subfolders pbr and non pbr Oops, if I could type. All right, so I have PBR and non-PBR. And then um, I'm going to go grab those textures that I just uploaded and get them out of here. And I don't know where it stops, so it stops at the AO. I'll take the AO too. That means I have a copy of the floor shadow. So I will cut those and then go down here to non PBR and I will paste them in there and here they are all right so let's go ahead and name our parts on the furniture this is the first thing you have to do for both texture changers and in the documentation for my texture changer, I tell you that you can, I think I tell you that you can, you can use whatever name you want for the parts. Um, Cause my script doesn't care. It just reads whatever's there. So I, you can't have multiple use descriptions. So like if you're using something like cool door or s maybe uh, some other kind of script that, that uses the description for data and you put a pound sign or something to separate it, uh, Black Tulip recognizes that. I don't recognize that yet. It's, it's something that I've got coming in another version, but in the version that's available today, it doesn't recognize that. So you can't use the description for more than one thing. Um, you only want to put in the description the the name of the part, and you can have you can have some kind of descriptor. So Black Tulip uses T semicolon and then the name of the part, and so since I want to use these parts for both texture changers, I'll use that name for for mine as well because my script doesn't care so we'll go ahead and edit the the parts and then under the description is where you put it so this is going to be uh head top this is head bottom so t semicolon head bottom this is pillow one so i'm going to call that t pillow one and then this would be T pillow two, T semicolon pillow. I can't see that. I have my monitor way over there. So, and this is the comforter. So T comforter. Uh, then we have mattress. Again, if you use, I like to use lowercase. If you have a, uh, your texturing done differently and you've made one object with multiple faces um, then the one object with multiple faces would have one name and it will distinguish them by face number so it would be t semicolon mattress for the whole piece right but then what the scripts will do is they'll it'll use t semicolon mattress and then it'll put up uh, zero one two three four whatever the face number is in the script uh, and in the note card you don't need to worry about it here you just you just name it so and this is called box springs t semicolon box spring and then these are the side rails and then this is the foot board so, okay and then uh i think that's it i don't want i don't care about the shadow because i'm not going to change it so you don't need to name it um i'll just take that out just to be safe that's the that's the ground there it is uh let's see mattress sorry comforter mattress box spring side rails bottom top pillow one pillow two and footboard okay so those all have names now we'll go ahead and put the black tulip scripts in here and so for black tulip 
I'm going to use this right pillow as the place where I put my black tulip script so the user can click on this pillow to get the texture changer menu. If you're using AV sitter, you can add a button to AV sitter that will pull that up as well. And um, it uses a specific channel number to do that. And you put that into your AV pause file and then it will, it'll connect. And that's all in how you set up the texture changer from black tulip. So let's go ahead and grab that. That's down in here. My gargantuan inventory of 302,000 items. So for the texture changer for them, you use you need an auxiliary tool. That's the, but I have something called a dump script. This is basically what the auxiliary tool is. You need their runtime script and you need a config note card i don't use a config note card on mine because mine's pretty basic so um, they add a lot of features and capabilities mine's pretty bare bones so drag that in okay black tulip is now ready to run so you click it brings up a menu it brings up two menus actually it brings up one for the runtime script which is this one and one for the auxil oh I had them backwards this is the auxiliary script and this is the runtime script and so I have all these different buttons in here that do a whole bunch of different things, which I never use and I don't know what they do. And I have to look up their instructions every single time. And their instructions are on a web page. And if they ever go out of business and that web page goes away, I'll never know how to use it, which is why I don't like putting instructions on web pages. Um, I bought a bunch of stuff from Handy. Handy went out of business and his instructions are all on the web. And so now I've lost all the instructions. Anyway, so you, you click the pillow and then when... The auxiliary tool runs you get this pop-up and you just hit create and then it's going to put it in nearby chat and here it comes dumping out a whole bunch of stuff mm -hmm. this is all the data that's going to go into a note card and then when it's done it will actually pull up a formatted page that's semi-formatted just has blank lines in it which i hate um, notice it's got a one here that's got to change so we'll change that once we load it in that's the alpha blend mode and it's set to alpha blend right now and you don't want it to be alpha blend you want it to be opaque so we change that to a zero but we'll do that in a minute uh, okay so I'm just gonna call this test this is the note card that you put it in so I'm gonna call it uh, Test one. Oh no, we'll call it theme. Set theme asterisk colon test one. Okay. All right. That's the format that Black Tulip uses. So it's open bracket BT close bracket colon, and then you put the your menu structure and then the the name of the the theme that you want. So. We're going to call it theme test one. And then in that, I'm going to dump what I just copied and get rid of these blank lines. It actually runs slow because it reads this file every time it does it. And it reads it line by line and it reads that blank line. If you have it in there, it takes like a half second longer per line or something. So taking it out, it just runs faster. You don't have to take it out if you don't want to. And then the other thing is we need to change this. This is your specular settings. And so I think it's specular. These are specular, but this is your alpha blend. And so uh, I just know it's 51010. Copy that. We'll go to not you. Um, search and replace. Put that in search. Put it in paste as well. Change the thing to a zero so now it says 51000 and then replace them and then save okay and now <laughs> oh, i just dumped out the white so th this is this is going to be our white this is a this is the uh, the basic white look so we have this called test one just so i can see it change I was wondering why I haven't even textured yet. Why am I making a note card? So edit your pillow. There it is. We're going to drop that in here. All right. 
And then I don't have any, I'm not gonna do the PBR right now. So when I click this again, I get, the, like I said, I get two menus that come up. One is the auxiliary with the create button. The other one is the runtime, which actually shows the theme menu and then shows there's the test one. If I click it, it actually runs. You can't see it run. Oh, did you just see it? You saw a little flash there. It actually ran, it did its, it did it in business. And when it's done, this menu comes back. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put our textures on here. And then we'll do it again. And the textures are down here. And so this is a time consuming task and you get to watch me do it. Uh, edit, we'll go here and there. So it starts with side rails. So let's do this first, diffuse normal, specular. The next one's pillow two, pillow two, diffuse, pillow two, normal, pillow two, specular. Is this tedious enough for you yet? Next one's pillow one, pillow one, diffuse, pillow one, normal, pillow one, specular. Next one is mattress. Mattress diffuse, mattress normal, mattress specular. And then bottom one is, oh, I don't know what's next. Head top is next, okay. Uh-oh, I froze for a second. Head top is here. Oops, I put mattress on there. I could tell it didn't look right. Head top normal. Head top specular. And we're doing this because people who don't have a PBR viewer cannot see PBR materials. So they need to have non PBR materials on there. And so you need to have both texture changers. For us, it sucks until people, everybody starts using PBR. It's, it's going to suck. Uh, that's head top. Next one's head bottom. Head bottom diffuse. Head bottom normal. Head bottom specular. And then the comforter. Comforter, comforter, comforter. Diffuse. Comforter normal. Comforter specular. Then we have the box springs. I think this is alphabetical order. That's why it's like this. Diffuse. Did I skip the foot? I don't have the foot. Maybe I didn't export it. Normal, specular. Uh, yeah, I must not have exported it. So let's go back over here. Hmm. It says it exported it. Oh, I turned everything off. Well, that'll do it. Computers have a funny way of doing exactly what you tell them. Now, I exported everything again. It doesn't matter. It doesn't just takes a little bit longer. But as far as Second Life concerned, I'm not going to upload all those things. I'm just going to upload the ones I want, which is in here somewhere. Footboard, footboard, footboard. And then I got to copy them over here. And I'm going to go in here and I'm going to create a new folder and we'll call this uh, stripes. And then I'm going to go ahead and move all of these into blue stripes. That one can stay out there. That way, because uh, it doesn't tell you what they are. So it doesn't tell you what texture this is. It just gives you the name of the part and the the type of material that doesn't tell you anything about what it looks like. So you have to organize it yourself. So I'll move it into blue stripes. And then I could actually, if I wanted to do the wood, I, I could do that too. I could have a separate one. I put the material or the, yeah, the materials for the wood in a separate thing. So maybe I should do that. Let's do new folder. Woods. And then inside of that, 
I call this one darkness. It's just what I call it. So let's get the ones for the wood out of here. Footboard, 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 side rail, side rail, side rail. You get to see how I organize things. Okay. I'll put them in here. All right. And then this is just the bedding. So the bedding is the mattresses cover, the box springs cover. In other words, the sheets, the uh, pillows, and the comforter. But I'm not going to create a subfolder for that. Uh, okay. Still haven't textured this, so let's go do that. Mm -hmm. Footboard diffuse. Footboard normal. Footboard specular. Okay. So there we have it. It's done with the bling fong textures. And looks pretty darn good. Okay. Now let's create our texture set for that. So to do that again, we click on the right pillow. We go to create. It's going to dump out a whole bunch of stuff into local chat. Again. And then uh, it's going to give me the formatted output, which I click on that to get the formatted output and copy it. Now I'm going to put it into a note card. Uh, which I don't have here, so I got to go get the one that I did, which was in. Oh, not you. Wait a minute, what's going on? Ah, oh, my computer keeps freezing. There it is. Get that sucker. And put it in here. Um, and again, I'm going to put it here in the just the non-PBR folder. If I wanted to create a uh, note card for the wood separately and for the bedding separately, I could. I could come in here and uh, copy that. And we'll go into woods and I'll paste it. And then, did I paste it? There it is. And I will rename that to be wood. Darkness. Like that. And then just strip out everything that's not related to the wood. Pillows. The other thing you can do is you can relink your object so that your parts are grouped together. Uh, because this is generated by the uh, the way you created your linking. Uh, if you if you follow that, you understand what I mean. If you didn't follow that, I'm sorry. And mattress. Oh, ah, it's every other one. Every, every other one. So those are footboard, headboard. Headboard, side was okay. So that's going to be the wood. And then if I copy it again and put it into here, I'm going to rename that. We'll call it bedding. And blue stripes. Is that what I call it? No, blue stripes. And then edit that one and pull out everything that's. So I'll explain what I was, I think it's important that you understand it. So I'll tell you again, as soon as I get done with this. Okay. Now we want to take the two that I just created, which is the wood and the bedding. We're going to drag those into here as well. So it's going to have three different note cards in here. One for the bedding, one for the wood, 
and then oh I didn't create a theme oh would have been easier if I had uh, let's do that <clears throat> we'll call it test two because I don't have a better name and then um yeah so what I should have done was copy everything into this and then I could have split it up so let me go back to my output here copy it put it in this theme oh darn it that just tells me what I did so I put the white the all white into those other two note cards because I didn't do this step yet so okay that's fine while I'm in here I'm going to clean this up so let's take the separate the wood from the non-wood so I don't have to do this multiple times and then this one so you're going what is he doing why did he do that because I screwed up that's why mm -hmm. the joy of video all right so there we have I have the bedding at the top and I have the wood at the bottom so let's go ahead and take this and you'll notice that I didn't have to do change the one to a zero because once I've done it and I ran the I ran the actual texture changer it changed it to uh, <clears throat> to opaque so I don't have to and the next time I export it, it keeps it all right so what did I just copy I just copied uh, oh shoot no oh cancel uh this is called test two and this is the bedding okay so i copy the bedding sorry I'm confusing myself and then this one i copied it in two places so that's in the furniture and then i need to change it in here then get the wood go ahead and put it in the wood here and then oops that's the same one there's the woods there they are and put it here okay so what i meant by that was uh the first time I ran this, that flag was set to true. So it was a zero or one. It was a one, which means it was set to the options are zero, one, and two. Zero is opaque. One is or none. One is alpha blend, and the other one is alpha. Whoa, what is that? You guys are seeing text all over my screen that I'm not seeing. Hang on, let me pause this while I figure that out. I don't know how long that was on the screen. So I just looked over at my OBS uh, screen and there was like uh, text all over the screen. So I had somehow created a new window and pasted into it. So don't know how long that was up there and I apologize for it because I wasn't looking at that screen. Um, okay, going back to what I was talking about. So the, the alpha flag, it's basically when you look at this, you go into textures and where's it at right here alpha mode there's none there's alpha blending and alpha mask and so that one means alpha blend a zero means none and so once i changed it in the note card and then i put the note card in here and then i ran the texture changer and i selected that option for that note card it ran and it changed um, all of the ones on the bed to actually none so then the next time i ran the texture changer and generated the create it saw that it was none and so the new the new uh the new copies of the files that come out all have it set to zero so i don't have to change it every single time so i do that uh, it, it happens all the time and so if you don't catch it it's a pain in the ass because you got to go back and edit every single one of these files and change every single one of those ones to a zero so it's best to do it at the very beginning change it run it one time so that it it sets it correctly and then you don't have to worry about it anymore which i I'd, i've done that so many times i didn't even think about that's what i was doing but anyway that's what i did 
So here we go. Uh, we have it in here. We have test one. I don't have test two in here yet because I haven't put it in here yet. So let's drag it in. All right, there's test two. We'll put the same level. Here we go. Test one and test two. We'll take test two and drop it in here now. Okay. Now if I run not the auxiliary tool, but the actual runtime, you have a test one and a test two. If I go back to test one, everything should turn white. And it did. And then it gave me the menu back. And then if I hit test two, it should come back and look like it does. Okay. So the non PBR is done. Now here comes the fun part. We're going to do the PBR. And so for the PBR, I'm going to use the left pillow. And this is where I'm going to put all of my scripts. And so my scripts, if you get them from me, they come in the box and you'll have them somewhere. I have them right here. So I have a data dump script. That's like their auxiliary tool for creating the output. And then I have the runtime scripts. Instead of one runtime script, I use two. I have one for touch and one for AV sitter. If you don't use AV sitter, you don't need this. You can just leave it out. If you don't want them to click on something to get the menu, then you can leave this one out. Um, you need one or the other of the scripts though, if you want to have a texture changer. So if you if you know you're just using AV sitter menu and you don't want them to click on it, just use AV sitter. If you just want them to click and you don't want them to use an AV sitter menu, then use touch. If you want them to do both, just drop both of these in here. So I'm going to do both and then the data dump. And then the, th the fourth script is what I call LSD loader. LSD is link set data. So my texture changer script uses link set data, which is a permanent data store that's inside of the object for storing data. And so once we're done with this, we won't need the note cards anymore because it's, it loads it into the actual object and it's persistent. So you can reboot it, you can restart it, you can do whatever, and the data will still be there. Um, and it's faster and it takes up less memory and it's it's just a better way of doing things. And so I wanted to do it that way, so I did. But you have to get the data from the note cards into the memory in the LSD. And that's what this script is for. It actually reads the note cards and updates the LSD. And anytime there's a change, so if you make an edit to a note card, it will automatically update the LSD. So you can change note cards, you can drop in new note cards. Every time you do that, it's gonna run the LSD loader, it's gonna reset the data and, and reload it. So it resets the data and then reloads the data. So you can't just make some simple changes and then uh, remove the note cards and then say, oh, I wanna change one thing. I put just that one note card back in, it's gonna reset everything. And you only have that one note card. So that's one of the things about my script that you got to know is uh, if you are going to make changes to your texture changer note cards, you need to have all of them in there. Otherwise, uh, they'll be missing. So it, it'll reset them all every time it runs, it resets. So it's so a note to caution. You want to make sure that you don't remove your note cards until you know you're done. And then keep a copy of them so that if you ever have to make a change, you want to put them all back in to make the change. So I know it's a little bit of a pain, but you, as Monk says, you'll thank me later. Um, okay, so let's put these four scripts into this left pillow. Okay, so my scripts are in and we are ready to go. So now let's go back to um, Substance Painter. So it's the exact same model, exact same materials applied, everything's the same. All we're gonna do is a different output template. So we're gonna do our export, we're gonna export the exact same stuff, but instead of Second Life, we're gonna go up and we're gonna use the GLTF PBR Metal Roughness Output Template. And that's it. And then you're gonna hit Export. Now it's gonna generate a ton of files. It does, I think it's four or five different image files for each material um, and the GLTF. The GLTF is kind of like a zip file. If you think of it, it holds all this stuff in there. It's, it's the, uh, it's what makes this um, worthwhile for us because it's, well, one of the things it makes it so easy to use because you only have to deal with one file as opposed to dealing with all of these individual textures now you can play with the individual textures if you want to and you it will upload them it uploads them into second life um when you upload the material but it also uploads the material by itself and then it 
the material holds all of the materials for all of the parts in one file. So you don't have to deal with 18 different files. And I'll show you that now. So, okay, it's done. So let's go back to Second Life and I'll show you what we're doing. So we're going to upload the material. And so you go to build, upload. And so I could pick material. And then I just pick the name of the material, which is the name of the bed. So I saved it. So it's called country bed. So I would click that. Now you notice there's two here and they look exactly the same. And you, you go, oh, I don't know which one to upload. Well, just look at the size of the files. This file is, and hopefully this will change over time. But this one is 26 kilobytes. This one is, I don't know, a lot more. It was like 83 megabytes. Yeah. Waiting for the pop-up. Okay, it, it's not coming. It's it's not cooperating with me this time, but it was like 35 megabytes or something like that. It's a huge file compared to the other one. So the And it's always on top. So you want the one that's on top. There it goes, 83.5 megabytes. So you want this one, not that one. So click on it and hit open. Open. All right, and now it waits. Uh, okay. So because I told it I wanted to upload an individual material, it, it looks at that file and it inspects it and then it looks to see what materials are inside of it and it gives me a drop-down list. So I could, buckle, I could bulk upload all of them if I want to upload all of them, which I do, or I could upload individual ones. And so when you do a bulk upload all, it will, it will upload all of these different materials and separate them. And so when you, it'll go into your materials folder as individual materials. So you'll get a box spring material, a comforter material, a footboard material, a head bottom material, etc. If I if I do an individual one instead, it just uploads that one. Now, in addition to that going into the materials folder, in your textures folder, you get one of each of the underlying textures for the box springs, for the comforter, for the footboard. So there's like four, I think there's four, there's like a, there's a base color, there's a normal, there is a metallic roughness, there is a emissive, and in the future there may be more, but I think that's the ones that they use right now, so there's four. And so uh, it'll upload all of those. And so you could actually use those textures individually and you can edit your material. You could change those. You can, you can adjust them. That's how you change the transparency of something. That's how you change the color of something. Um, we're used to doing it the, the old Blin Fong way, but in the, in the new material way, you actually edit the material to, to change that. And so, yeah, so you, you do get the files, but you, but I I have yet to use them. So the only thing I use is the material. So we're going to go ahead and do bulk, bulk upload all and hit OK. The other way to do that, I'm, I'm going to cancel this and show you the other way to do it, um, is you just do build, upload, bulk. And then you have to actually change this to say GLTF and then pick the one you want and then hit it, and then it does the same thing, but it doesn't ask you. It'll just automatically upload all of them. So there's two different ways to upload bulk your materials. And it takes a little while for it to think. So here we go. Now it's uploading all of those individual textures. And if you go down to your textures folder, you can see them start coming in. And so, yeah, so it, no. I'm not quite sure why it says country bed on here twice. I think it's probably something to do with the fact that the model's called country bed in Blender and it was called country bed in um, Substance Painter. Maybe I, if I had differentiated it somehow, it wouldn't have, wouldn't have come out with country bed listed twice like that. But the cool thing about this is it tells me, um, tells me the name of the the bed so this is country bed is is the name of this bed so i know which thing these materials are for as opposed to the old way it, it didn't tell you that it just it just says it's a material and it's a norm and you're gonna go oh my god what am i doing so what does this belong to so at least i know it goes to this bed and then it also tells me which part is for so this is the 
country bed side rails and and then which texture it is this is the emissive this is the metallic roughness the normal the base etc so it really it's very helpful the way it tells you this but again i don't use these i've never touched them you can if you want to if you want to look at them this is just like a diffuse yeah this is not important this is the important part so it's very very similar to the diffuse model that we used before and the normals the normals look the same as the normals from before so i've actually used these um, on models as my blend fong materials so save myself a couple steps i don't have to export it twice <clears throat> and a lot of times i don't use speculars anyway so uh, if I just know that I'm going to use the norm and the base, I mean, uh, the norm and the diff, right, then uh, I could just use these. I don't have to export it twice. But, you know, exporting twice doesn't really cost anything. So anyway, again, these are the materials that are inside there, the textures that are inside the material. I'm not going to use those. We're going to go up to the materials folder, and then you see here they are. And this is very helpful because it tells me it's for the country bed and it's the side rails. What it doesn't tell me is that it's the darkness wood or that it's blue stripes. I wish it did. I wish there was a way to output that. Uh, if there is, please tell me. Uh, an easy way to do it. I know I know a not easy way to do it. All right. Um, and so this is why it's so much easier than doing it the other way. There's only one thing I got to worry about instead of three for each part. And I don't have to worry about where in the UI these go. So I just know, oh, look, this is my side rail material for this one. Oh yeah, one other thing. I'm looking at the bling fong materials right now. So uh, once I, because I don't have any PBRs on here. Once you put a PBR material on here, then things start to change and you can't see the bling fong anymore. Uh, as long as you've got the PBR one on there so you can't see it. So what I want to do is, um, we'll, we'll, we'll do this as we go. So if, if you're not careful, you, you might not remember where you put stuff. But also remember we had the thing about the alpha. It's going to come up again, but it's a slightly different way, a slightly different issue. Because I uploaded the material bulk, it took it the way it was, and I couldn't change it. If I had uploaded it one by one, I could actually go in and change the transparency when I save the material, and it would have saved it as uh, opaque. These these because of the way I was using Substance Painter, I used it with uh, opac opacity on so it put alpha channels in here and so it sets it to alpha blend well i don't want it to be alpha blend i want it to be none or opaque and <clears throat> so i have to change that and i'll show you how we do that but anyway it's not hard um so you just drag this onto the side row boom there it goes now it's on there and then we're going to drag this on pillow two boom it's there pillow one boom it's there mattress boom it's there head top, head bottom. Now you're starting to see what I'm talking about. Footboard, hmm. And then when I do the comforter, you're really gonna see it. Oh, look. And then when you do the box springs down here, okay. And I'm not gonna do the shadow because it doesn't change and it already looks the way I want it to look so I don't care about the shadow. Now you look at this and go, Dude, it looks totally screwed up. Where's my pillow? I see part of the pillow here, but I don't see the pillow here. That's because Alpha Blend's turned on. So to get rid of Alpha Blend, just edit your object. Go to Edit Linked. We need Alpha Blend on for the shadow on the floor, but we don't need it on for everything else. So just Shift, deselect the floor. Everything else is still selected. Go to Texture. Change this to PBR Metallic Roughness. Hit Edit. Go to the base color, alpha mode, set it to opaque, and hit the X and close, and you're done. That's it. So now we changed it to no opaque. Okay, so this is the same set of textures. Why am I not being able to move? It's the same set of textures. Ah. Second life is freezing. There we go. That's not Second Life. It's Firestorm is freezing. So there we have the bed done in PBR. Okay. Now I can't see the Blend Fong anymore. Okay. So now we need to save this texture changer. 
or we need to save this texture set for the texture changer. So to do that, you just left click this pillow and then a little menu pops up. You, you'll probably get two menus. You'll get a touch menu and you get this and you get an error at the beginning uh, because I, because I don't have any, <clears throat> I don't have any material sets defined in my texture changer. So it's trying to build a dialogue menu with nothing in it. So I know that bug, I'll fix it in another release, but you just ignore it. Click dump data. Okay, this is gonna dump it out into, uh, it's, it's to the owner chat. And so my owner chat is routed to my debug window, but if you don't have it set that way, it'll come out in nearby chat. And there it is. This is, this is the output. So it's very streamlined output. Now you'll, you'll notice that you have, I don't give you the formatted output because I'm lazy and I don't want to have a server where I have to do that, but this is it. So you'll see begin material data dump, and then you'll see end material data dump. You just want to copy everything that's in between there into a note card. And we'll just go down into here where we were. Where am I at? My PBR materials, country bed, PBR, and then we're going to do, oh, I need a note card. Let me grab one of these and I'll rename it. Uh, country bed, PBR. I have a note card, but I don't want it to be called BT. I'm going to call it PBR. All right. And then instead of theme, I'm going to call it, um, <clears throat> mine's, mine works differently. So I don't have multiple menu hierarchy. Mine only has one menu, but you put the not, the name of the object in here. So we're going to call it country, but it doesn't matter what this is. This is just for my own reference. So I know which thing I'm working on. Um, <clears throat> it's just whatever text you want to put there. And then this is the name of the, th the item in the menu. So I only, is that right? Maybe I'm doing this wrong, right there. Okay, PBR, bed, bedding. Okay, I have one menu, one menu level. So yeah, okay. So theme, oh no, yeah, yeah. Theme, I don't even know my own thing. I can't read that far. I have a multi multi monitor setup, and the monitor that I'm using uh, right now for Second Life is 1080 monitor, so that these videos aren't for on my 4K giant monitor. Uh, it's it's beyond arm's reach, and I'm old and I have bad eyesight, so I have to lean over to do it. And my headsets are plugged in, and they just rip my head off. So this is the format for my texture changer. So it's PBR colon, and then this is just a um, the first field is whatever you want it to be it could be um, it's just so you know which thing you're working on so this is the country bed so I called it country bed I put an asterisk after that you don't have to put an asterisk after it I just did it because it's consistent and then a semicolon separates the field so you need that and then this is going to be your top level menu item and I only have one level of menu so this is going to be your menu uh, button which is theme and then I put an asterisk after that so that when you see it on the pop-up menu, you'll know it's a menu. And then test two is the name of the theme and there's no asterisk because it's the actual thing that you want. So that's just some naming practices to help you do it. It's the same as the way they did for um, Black Tulip. I just use the same structure. But I only have one menu. She has multiple menus that you can nest right here. <clears throat> I'm adding that. It's not there right now. But uh, right now it's just one level deep. But you can have like a theme menu, a bedding menu, a wood menu, just like we did. And so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to copy this twice. And I'm going to rename this to woods. Only two of those in the woods. Darkness. Did I say darkness? No, this is Darl Mess. And then this one's going to be bedding blue stripes. Just so I use the same names as before. 
use a capital F. Right. Now I, I can take this output that I have right there. And we're going to paste it into the theme, just like I did here. And then you want to delete anything before the T and then any extraneous lines. So this line came out because of the shadow. So mine texture changer, this is going to go away. This, this is, it's, it's kind of a bug, I guess you could say. I look at every single link prim in the object and I generate this text even if there's no label. So this is the this is the shadow. I don't need it, so just delete it. And then if you have multiple faces with the same material on it, there would be one line for each one of them. You don't need if it's the same material, you don't need the extra line, so you can delete those yourself. In this case, I didn't have that. I have one material for each one of the parts, so it came out once. Now, I don't need the 1132 in the space, so I'm going to delete that. Um, I use Notepad++ on my computer, and I have some regular expressions that um, help clean this stuff up. If anybody wants to know what those are, I can tell you. But uh, it's just as there's only a few in here so it's just as fast to do it this way right here so there we go and we're going to save that okay and then i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to segregate this by um, part or not part but bedding from the wood so take out the wood and move it down here and then this one Again, if you organize your links in your object, these will all come out together. So when you link, you could unlink it, right? Unlink your object, and then you're going to select all of the the wood first. And then if you had metal pieces, you could select the all of the metal pieces next, and then all of your bedding pieces last, and then the last object that you pick, the last part that you pick would become the root prim and then hit link when you do these outputs they will they will come out grouped together so saves you saves you some time when you do that i didn't do that uh, on this one so okay so these are the bedding so i'm going to copy these into the bedding note card And then this is the wood. So I'm going to copy that and put it into the wood. I'm saving this one too. This is my theme. Theme is everything. And then this is going to go in the wood and save it. And the structure here, so in case you were wondering what this means, so this is this is the label that you have on the part in the description and they have to match and this is where it came from this is the face number and since i'm using only one face i'm using all sides uh, it's a zero if i was using individual faces then they would be showing up here as a one or two or three or four whatever and then the third parameter is the uuid of the material that's applied to this part that's all that is it's just the uuid of the material um so you can actually create these manually yourselves if you want to. You don't have to use the dump tool. If you know what your UIDs are and you know what face they're on and, and what you want to call them, you, you can manually create this file very quickly. Or if you if you change the material and you, do, you don't want to go back and do a dump and you know the UUID of the new material, you can just copy the UUID from your inventory and paste it in here and then um, update the file. So. Anyway, so we have these three files. Just make sure they're in here. This is one, two, and three. Okay. Now comes the fun part. So this is my debug window, and I have my owner messages routed to that, so it's going to show up here. So we're going to edit the left pillow, which is where I have my scripts. Remember I told you about the LSD loader script this is what loads 
the note cards into memory. So anytime I make a change to the furniture, the script runs because it, it looks to see if there's a change in this folder and it says, aha, you changed something, so I need to reload. So we're going to change by dropping these three things in here. And now you'll see, aha, loading PBR material note card into link set data. We found that there are three note cards in the inventory. The note card data has been written to the link set loading PBR material completed. You may continue to use this object now. So it's telling you that it's done. Now, from this point, I can delete the LSD loader script and I can delete these material uh, note cards and it will work. It will function, but um, if I want to make changes to it, I need to have them in here. And I need to have all of these note cards in here every time it makes a change. So don't delete them until you're absolutely done and you're about ready to put the, the furniture out onto the marketplace and you want to give it to somebody or sell it to somebody. Then you can remove those and uh, you'll be safe. Uh, the data dump, you can remove you don't need it. Uh, you should never put that out when you release your product to the world. You don't want the data dump script in the, the only things you want left in your product when you put it out are the texture changer scripts themselves. So you either want the AV sitter script, the touch script, or both. Um, okay, we can't see the change that I made because I only have one um, thing. I don't have a test one like we did before. So let's let's go ahead and create a test one. Well, how can I create a test one? Well, I can go and hit Edit, just like I did before, edit everything, select everything, put edit linked on, turn off the floor, and then go to texture, PBR metallic, click this multiple, and hit none. Now my PBRs are gone. I don't have any PBRs. It's completely blank. Okay. That's how you get rid of them. If you ever want to know, how do I get rid of the PBR material so I can see the blend fong again? That's what you do. You edit it, you go to the thing, you click the, the, the oh, here, I'll show you again. Edit it. I don't need to do the bottom one. And just click this material preview, which doesn't work by the way, and hit none. That clears out the PBR material and then, then you're left with the, the texture. So, um, but I want to have blank. So how do I get back to blank? So I want to do that. Well, I come over here and I hit this and just go to test one. Okay. So now I've made it blank again, right? <laughs> well, I can, okay, so it's blank. Now, if I hit this, and do test two, you'll see the blend fong set of textures. If I go to test one, you will see the blank textures. Okay. And then if I click the left pillow and click theme test two, there's uh oh. It's set them with opacity is on, so let's go. Oh, yep, yeah, that's true. Aha. <laughs> okay, I just found a bug, but I already have it fixed. So I have this fixed in my furniture that I put out, uh, and I'll, I'll have to figure out how to do this. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to do that with the alpha transparency on everything. So I got to figure out why is it doing that and then stop it. But um, I have a, uh, I have a version of this script that sets the transparency to off automatically. So yeah, you might not want to do that. So I'll have to figure out how to make that work better, but here we go. So all you do is you just go in here and do the same thing we did last time. Edit link. No one's going to want to do this, right? No one's going to want to, your, your customer's not going to want to do that. So I have a fix for this and so I'll, I'll put it in 1.03. We'll have this fixed as well. Um, but for now, what you do is that you just, uh, what, am I, what am I doing? Oh yeah. Edit, turn off everything and then go back to PBR2. Edit and then do opaque. 
So yeah, I was surprised to see it do that. Um, okay, so that's so this is blend. I'm gonna sorry. This is PBR, right? And this is your PBR materials, and uh, the texture changer is working. So I okay. So I'm gonna update the texture changer to 1.03, and I will put in the thing that gets rid of the opacity. True, but then it's not gonna allow you to do opaque. I mean, a transparent. Hmm. Yeah, so this is something's in this process. It's something in my process. So I'm thinking about why is it doing this? It's something in my process that the materials that I'm creating have opacity turned on and I shouldn't be doing that. So it's something in my SP export. I need to make sure that those materials are not set to opacity is on. And then, the, then it's going to work perfectly fine. So as long as you know your materials are set to uh, um, not be uh, alpha, not to have alpha blending turned on. So, so okay, how can I do that? Well, and don't do bulk. For me, because of my process, I'm, I did the bulk import, and it imported them that way. Now, I'll try and figure out why mine come out that way, but I know how to stop it. So... Instead of doing bulk upload, we'll do bulk. We'll do. We'll go back and upload the materials again. So this time you have to do them one by one. So this is the first one, box springs. So we'll hit that, and then it opens it when you do it. When you try to upload the materials individually, it's going to open them up in this editor, and see it says alpha blend is set to alpha mode is set to blend. If you set it to opaque and then hit save. Um, it's now going to save it to my it's saving yet yeah, saving. It's going to upload the files and it's going to set it into my materials here. Where, where am I at? There it is. And so this one, as opposed to the other one, um, is set to opaque, not alpha blend. So now just do that again, and, and we're going to do this for all of them. So one by one, we're going to upload them. There's not a way to turn alpha off on a, a bulk upload, so I don't know. And the problem is how I exported them. So I need to figure out why I'm exporting them with alpha blend turned on. But the solution is just to go through and re-upload them. So that's comforter. And then we're going to do the next one. So you guys get to... Go through this process multiple times. I, I'm probably going to pause the video. So you don't have to watch me do all this. Unless you want to. Opaque. Doesn't take that long. It's got to re-upload all these images again. For each one. Alright, so that's the footboard. Build. Upload. Material. Head bottom. Yeah, okay, so I'm going to pause the video so you guys don't have to watch me do this for every single one of these materials, and then I'll come back. Okay, I'm back. So I went through and I uploaded each one of the materials individually. I set each one of the materials to be alpha mode opaque, and I've applied all of them to the, the bed. So they're right. Now I want to do a dump again. So we're going to hit that. And now because I have both the texture changer script and the dump script you get two menus actually you get more than two so hit dump it's going to come up in the output window and we'll take everything ex i don't need the zero 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 thing that's the shadow we'll take all of this stuff we'll copy it and we'll just go right into that note card which was the theme and we will paste this and delete the timestamp on each line. This is good because you get to see how to make changes. So, so this is how, if we wanted to make changes to a note card, this is how you would do it. <clears throat> so, and when I save this, the LSD loader script is going to run. So you just have to wait until it finishes because uh, it's going to run. But 
while we're in here, let's go ahead and structure this like we did before. I'm going to move this to the bottom. And this one. This one. And this one. So all my woods are at the bottom and my bedding is at the top. And then I'm going to copy that. Okay, go ahead and hit save on this. The LSD loader script's going to run. So you get a message that says, found three note cards in inventory, please wait. Okay, it's finished. So now we're going to go to the woods and paste that save so i'm going to add an i didn't do it yet but i'm going to add an alpha flag in here so you'll be able to control whether or not it, it has alpha enabled so there'll be a pipe zero or one or two for the alpha mode and that way you'll be able to set it on a line by line basis what the alpha mode is the script doesn't do that right now but it will so 1.03 will have that and anyway the script works perfectly fine it's the fact that my materials came in that way that's the problem so all right, so I saved, did I save it? Thanks, I shouldn't talk while I do this. Okay, found three note cards, and so it's loading. Okay, it loaded. And then go back, get the bedding, and we'll put it in the bedding script. That's all the bedding. Okay, I can close this one now. And then where's the bedding? There it is. And save. All right, I'm done with that. And it says it's found three note cards and it just finished loading them. Okay, so it's pretty quick. Now, if you have, if you put a hundred note cards in your furniture, that script's gonna run every single time and it's gonna run and it's gonna process all 100 note cards each time. So don't do that. Um, you know, you don't need that many. I've done it with like 30 scripts and it runs, it takes about five seconds, six seconds to run. So it's not that bad. It may take a little longer if there's lag, but it's not terrible. Anyway, so, okay, that's running. Let me go ahead and close these. Now let's see what happens. So if I go to theme and pick test two, it's gonna run. Oh, I don't need this open. And hey, it didn't go alpha out on me. It worked. I know you can't really tell, but it, it, it worked. So we'll go to the bedding one and we'll run that. And nothing went alpha. And we'll go to the wood one and we'll run that and nothing went alpha. Okay, so they're working. So again, to reiterate, if I go, uh, I have two different texture changers in here now, one that I don't make and one that I do make, and they're both working fine, and I can I can use either of them. Now, here's the, here's the thing that most people aren't gonna know. They're not gonna notice it, right? <clears throat> I'm using a PBR capable viewer, so I can't see the blend fong if I have the PBR materials on here. So I can go over here and I can pick um, test one, nothing happens. So nothing happens. Sorry, I turned the camera just in case she's naked. I don't know. I don't know if she is or not. But, um, if I hit test two, it's already, it already looks kind of like test two anyway, so you can't see it. Can't see it because I can't see blend font. And then people who are using a non PBR capable viewer, they're going to have the same issue. So they'll, you know, they'll be in the blend font. They'll see the blend font, but when they go to the, click on the PBR material changer and they change something, they're not going to see it change. So that that you may get those kind of complaints from people. Why well, hit that? Nothing happened. Well, because you can't see it. But if you want to be able to see the blend fong, you just have to do like I did. Um, you have to go to this, hit edit. I think it's okay just to do everything. Yep. Yeah. So sit, edit, go to texture, click on this, and hit none. And so now you see the blend fong. And if I click on test, now I'm looking at the blend fong because there are no PBR materials applied. So I can see the blend fong. But this is blend fong. Okay. And then if I want to go see the P 
PBR again. Just click on this and hit theme and hit test tube. But this is going to show you what the difference between blend fung and PBR is too. So if you want to know. Okay, so you're looking at blend fung right now. And if I click this, it'll switch to PBR. Hey, look at that. It actually did change. So you can't really see a huge difference um, in this lighting and the situation that we're in right now. And with these materials, you don't notice a huge, huge difference. Uh, I notice it because I'm picky, but uh, yeah, this is material. This is PBR materials versus the blend fong. So anyway, that's it. So I found a bug that I got to fix, which uh, I'll have that. I'll have out ASAP, but it's not, it's not so much. It's a bug. It's like uh it's working if your materials aren't set to alpha blending. So I'll add a new feature. It's not a bug. I'll add a new feature to allow you to adjust the alpha mode on every single line of the note card. Um, and if you don't, it'll, if you don't put one, it'll default to opaque, but you can override it with an alpha. That's what I'll do. Um, so yeah, so it's working. Anyway, so I, again, we have two texture changers in here, one for non-PBR viewers and one for PBR viewers, and they work together um, without causing any kind of conflicts or clashes, and they work with AV Sitter. So I haven't tested that yet. Mine works with AV Sitter through a button that you have to define with the name texture or textures. So you put the button, as long as there's a button that says texture or textures, mine will fire. Now, I think the problem, it's not a problem, but what will happen is if you also use AV Sitter version of the black tulip texture changer, you'll just get both. You'll get both. So you'll have two menus pop up, one for PBR and one for non-PBR. So maybe I need to change my name of my my menu to be very clear that it's the PBR one. So uh, I'll check that. And if it, if it needs to be adjusted, I'll adjust that in 1.03 as we go forward too. Anyway, so that's the end of this video. I'm going to stop recording. If you have any questions, reach out to me. I'm Bandor Tyrell. My SL name is Bandor Benningborough. You can find me uh, in SL almost all the time. So feel free to reach out to me. Join our PBR materials group. It's that's the name of the group PBR materials. It's all about PBR materials. It's for sharing information about PBR materials. You can promote things that are PBR material related in there. I don't care. Um, and you can share information. So PBR materials is the name of the group. I have a PBR materials texture changer. I have a personal use one and I have a builder use one for, uh, it's copy trans. So you can use it in your builds. Um, anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me and we'll talk to you guys again soon.